from the Freedom Fiends broadcasting from the bug infested woods of New Hampshire. They got bugs the size of Deutsch Hounds here. Deutsch Hounds? Oh, about 40. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, we there's got four. Michael W. D. There's four. Got, oh, no, hang on. Hang no, on. we got three mics, man. Quit messing around, you guys. We got four mics. No, we got three mics. We got three mics. Four people. All right, let's do a mic check on each one. Uh, go ahead, Luke. This is a loose standard. Who's louder? They turned it down. Okay, go ahead. All right, this mic being yeah. Okay, I turned up a little bit. Go ahead, Luke. This is a loose standard theme. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Loose standard coming in. Okay, and I'm. Yeah, maybe turn it away. Go ahead and point it outside. Take it out the window. Screw yeah. those people. Screw yeah. those sleeping people. All right, so there we go. Yeah, I should have left it exactly like it was. All right, am I good now, Nathan? <coughs> okay, is Lou good now, Lou? This is Lou Sander Fiend. You good to go? He, he wants me much louder. I think you want me much louder. Right? You want to turn your gain up here. Turn the gain up here. Keep okay. your mics at unity. Okay. You know, adjust yourself. All right. Yeah. Ian Freeman showed up. I should better know. Okay. You want louder and better now? Is this good? Okay. Go ahead, Lou Sander. This is Lou Sander. We got Dr. Mind. Oh, they're loud. They're loud. I, I turned them up. I'll put them back to parity or unity. Uh, go ahead. I think this is Dr. Mark. Talk cats. Talk cats. Talk cats. Talk cats. Are we good there, sir, Nathan? Yeah. <clears throat> You're going to have to write. <clears throat> Just press. I need to come up? Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Get him over here. Am I too loud now? You want a beer? I'm almost okay. loud. It's all good. Go. We're almost live. Hey. Um, we don't have any near beer left, but if you want some near cocaine, we have some left here. <laughs> right on. <clears throat> okay, no cussing. No cussing. Lots of anarchy. Woohoo! Anybody work in Minnesota? GCN's hiring. Oh, here's the Here we go. Broadcasting not from a windowless bunker. I am in the wonderful hash and insect filled woods of New Hampshire at the Free State Project Extravaganza, the 11th, 11th, 11th annual uh, Hoot Nanny here in the woods where there's a bunch of beautiful armed hippies with guns. <laughs> And lots of people having fun. We got we got a sort of a panel discussion here. You know, it's uh, we got we got to serve the social contract by by sharing the wealth of the microphones with all the good people. On microphone number two to my right, we got Lou. Lou this is Lou Sander Fee, and I'm broadcasting live and worldwide from a windowless chair, a foot and a half away from Michael Dean. Excellent. And sharing mic three and four, because yes, they're they're manly enough to do that. We got over there. Got the jabbering coon cat. This is Dobby Barker, the shiny badger. <laughs> and we got some of our other hosts here too. Are you going to come on tonight, Nikki? Yep. We got Nikki Darling, the, what is your cat name? The Freedom Master. The Freedom Master. It's the one that's not a cat name. It's the exception to the rule that proves the rule. And, uh, the Freedom Master can be a cat. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I didn't <laughs> thought the Freedom Master could be a cat. It's just not a beast related name. DJ, what was the beast we saw today? It was really cool. We saw a pine marten run across the road. It's like it looks like a uh, like a wiener dog crossed with a squirrel. It was really cool. It was beautiful. 
and I'm taking all, taking all the flora and fauna, and I know that it is the custom today to go topless here, but none of y'all want to see me topless, but uh, if anybody else wants to get topless over here, you can feel free to topless. You guys are checking your email. You're on radio. You're on one radio station and LRN. So what do you got to say for yourself there? And you're, you didn't get a show the other day, and you're like, I want to be honest, I didn't get a show. So what do you got to say there? Uh, it's good to be at Port Crest. Cool. Dolly. Yes. You're awake. I'm awake. You're supercharged with superpowers. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So I have to warn you, I'm in rare form tonight. I have been awake since 7 a.m. Monday morning. Woo! And that was after only three hours of sleep. And sleep deprivation does incredibly strange things to my particular neurobiology. And so this is the closest to intoxicated I think anyone <laughs> has ever seen me. Yeah, there are four sober people, four sober adults. At uh, Port Fest, and, and I'm not one of them. Two of them are up, two of them are up here. Woo! Three? Are you sober too? Okay. Cool. But you brought the emergency medical liquor just in case there's some need for it, right? I do know my prescription. Oh, my. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, the prescription mushrooms. We're going to have to have a protocol about the word you because we're all in the same room. And if you just say you, it's sort okay. of unclear to, you know, the squinting listening audience who you're talking to. It's going to be very confusing. Well, Jimmy Carl Black's going to have to talk more to and not check his email up here. I'm working on it, man. Silence. I'm Radio on. silence. Radio silence. So I'm going to start with a little story about um, DJ and I coming here to Pork Fest. It's really short. It's really funny. And then we're just going to go around and talk about Pork Fest and how wonderful it is and how dear it is in our heart and how many days we have. You know, we'll get a 30-day Pork Fest chip if we've been here 30 days and we can share and then say thank you for your share and, we'll, <laughs> and then take turns. So I'm a recovering statist. Um, I was a lazy Democrat up until about seven years ago. And then I read a book called You and the Police by Boston Tea Party in one sitting. and became a minarchist in one night. And then I started listening to Free Talk Live, and it was, I, I was like, man, yeah, Liberty, sounds great. But it seemed like a mystical land. It seemed like I was getting like transmissions from Mars or something. I actually spent a lot of time about 10 miles from here as a kid. I've been in New Hampshire a bunch, but uh, I didn't really understand Liberty. And I started talking with people on the, on the forums, on the, on the free state forums, and I just couldn't grasp it. And the thing was, I, I'm a recovering drug addict, and I saw the damage that hard drugs do, and I was like, not arguing, but asking people on that forum, like, how, how, you know, how could you possibly legalize cocaine and heroin? Because, you know, people would be shooting each other in the streets, and they explained to me why the opposite of that was true. And it, it kind of brought me the rest of the way, but I wasn't quite all the way there, there yet. Then I met this guy, Neil Vidati, and he came over to my house, and he started making a movie called Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. It's like, the in-person touch is what really did it, and took me all the way. Like, a week of hanging out with that guy, and I was just completely one of these no government men, you know, I, it's people call them anarchists, volunteers, whatever, I call them no government men, no government women. And that happened, like, really, it, it's the human, you can do all the blogging and getting in your windowless bunker and talking on the internet all day long, but there's, uh, there's no, you know, the power of one person, like, looking across the table as an equal, is, there's nothing like it to really get you the last mile. And it's so hard, it's so interesting to me that, like, so many people can go from like zero to minarchist in one night, you know, 999 miles, and going that last mile can take a long time. But human touch and human contact can do that. So flash forward to after 24 hours of traveling and driving, and driving, and traveling, and flying, and space tubes about the size of this with 20,000 people in it. An intercontinental ballistic yes, highway. That thing. We arrive in Bennington. Bennington, what's the place in? Burlington. Bennington's the hippie college. In Burlington, which is a lot like New Hampshire, except there's a lot more um, liberals, I guess, is the thing. Ooh. And, <laughs> and here's, what's, what's the thing called where they like, the government makes people give people jobs even though they're not qualified? Minimum wage. Affirmative action. <laughs> Best, <laughs> the awesomest example of affirmative action I've ever seen. We get in after all this traveling, go to the baggage claim, all of a sudden I have to pee really bad, but on this plane, I walk up to the information booth, there's a guy sitting there, I say, Where's the bathroom? And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't really know. Um, and I started looking at him, looking at the, he, and I realized he's blind. So the information guy is blind. He doesn't have any touch screen, anything like that. And he's supposed to be getting information, and he doesn't know the first thing anyone's going to ask at this airport. And then, I, and he keeps trying to be helpful. And he'll try to be helpful, but they don't really have an answer. It's worse. And I was like, okay, thanks. And I started walking away. And I turned around. The bathroom was like right behind me, like a, a sighted seven-year-old child sitting there would have been like, it's right there, mister. But you know, 
they had to have a, a blind guy to fill some quota to give information. There's a lot of things blind people can do, but giving information in the airport for visual cues is apparently not one of them. So, this sounds like my experience looking for the post office in Washington, D.C., because apparently it's in the DARPA building. Like, there's these signs for the post office that lead you in this maze that are inside buildings and outside buildings and up escalators and down escalators. And finally, I'm like, I have to ask somebody, like a human, where the post office is. And it was this guard at DARPA, and he did exactly that. He pointed right behind me, and he said, it's right there, mister. <laughs> You got one there, Jimmy Carl Black? Chandler? That's a good name. He looks like Jimmy Carl Black from the old Zappa group. But. Right on. <laughs> no, man, uh, you know, I, I had to drive from Maine, which is bordering New Hampshire, and uh, I had a great drive. I didn't have to deal with the uh, TSA and all the airports and all that good stuff, so we just got to check out the mountain views and all that good stuff. So you didn't get your freedom search? No, oh. <laughs> none of that. None of that. You're, you're not getting your, your taxes worth if you didn't get your freedom search. Hey, <laughs> man. I just cranked on the iPod and drove the uh, long, lonely road. It was good. Cool, man. Luke? Well, my trip was uh, rather <laughs> interesting. I uh, came in from the failed state project of Detroit. And as I drove through New York State, I felt very, very, very dirty. Yeah. It was bad. Was there a sense of anxiety? I almost had to go back on medication. <laughs> Especially when I saw cigarettes with a state minimum price of like $9.83. Like, oh, oh my god, it's, it's ridiculous. Huh? Oh my god, I almost turned around, went back to Michigan and bought some of those expensive ones and took them to New York State and, and made a killing. <laughs> but anyway, I finally made it up here, and just like Michael and Dobby, I was very sleep deprived, and somehow or another, I made it till 10 p.m. Friday night, and Saturday morning went out and and started meeting old friends and new friends, and you know, I finally get to meet all these fiends that I've spoken to on the on the radio or via Skype or whatever, and it's, it's just it's. Is oh my it, god, I just... Oh, it, it, isn't it a trip to meet all these friends you've talked to Your on the internet, internet friends, for, yeah. for a while? It's like they actually displace water. They're not just like, they pass the Turing <laughs> test. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the other day I met uh, a friend of mine. She drove up here from Connecticut, and when I found out that she was outside Ben's trailer when I was doing the Sunday show, I was squibbling like a little girl. I knew it was just <laughs> unbelievable. And then Bill Buford really wanted to meet you, and you really wanted to meet him. And then tonight, in the dark, over by the movie showing, you guys were standing like this far apart from each other for like a half hour. And yeah. I thought you'd already met and chatted. And then suddenly you realized he was standing right next to you. Yeah, and we've been chasing each other around the, the campground for most of the day. Mm -hmm. So, How many people are sleep deprived? Right on. That's about 80% of the room. How many of you are sleep deprived, not because it's one in the morning and you're here, but you'd be sleep deprived anyway? Right on. That's 78% of the room, yeah. yeah. Port Fest, it's not suffering for it, but it, it's, uh, it takes some conditioning. I started like running on the hamster wheel to get, because I've been sitting in a chair for like 10 years making media for y'all. I'm suffering for your art. If you saw my movie tonight and you saw how like young and sexy I looked like eight years ago and now I'm just kind of fat, this, this belly is suffering for your art. And so I actually, I was like, you know, I haven't been out of the house and like, walk. I looked at the map, measured port, saw the big Rogers was, and I'm like, I'm going to be walking around this thing. So I got on the hamster wheel and started doing 20 minutes a day, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot when you just sit in chair all day. So I did some, I did some, some training to get ready for work festival. One what thing I found uh, finally meeting you is you don't really get a suntan from your com computer monitors. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just turning pink like a lobster, man. If you were any liquor, you'd be transparent. <laughs> I, I haven't put on any sunscreen, though, and I don't feel like an idiot because I've been under trees a lot. But, you know, so I've got some of this. On the like, subject of yeah. suntan lotion, I'm relatively certain that Free Aid has some in an emergency if you decide that you need some. Do they have the morning after sunscreen? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Plan B. <laughs> Plan B. That's a horrible name. Nothing about abortion, pro or con, but that's a horrible name for that product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's really surprised me is because Pork Fest is a rather free place. This is actually the third show that I'm doing where I'm actually dressed. 
wearing pants and a shirt. <laughs> I'm not the only one that does that. You, I'm so relieved. Yeah, we all sit around in our underwear and look at our microwave ovens and do radio. And it's, it's kind of like we kind of forget people are there. So there's people here. It's kind of interesting and more real. And we're going to have some of you come up one at a time, too, and yak on here, too. This is a breathalyzer before you come on to. Oh, oh, I guess I would have been. I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure. I do this show. I usually look no, like weight shaped Muhammad in his Guantanamo picture. <laughs> no, the breathalyzer is a minimum alcohol amount to get on the Yeah, all right. <laughs> what do we get for We're our back score? In, in case the listeners haven't figured out, we are in front of a live studio audience. Woo! <laughs> We're usually out in front of a microwave. And you get some Freedom Fiends buttons. And you get some Freedom Fiends buttons. Where are these two? There's an Amy's Bitcoin for everybody. Awesome. They're looking. They're all looking under the chair. We'll be back at this group of the free market. Freedom Fiends. Where's the car?